best with this community coming out and to this wonderful center uh, that is being uh, utilized by the community already. <laughs> you know, I, I want to thank the citizens, the residents of Zapata for electing such good public officials like Joe Rathman, the Commissioner Gabriel, and all of the other commissioners, and for electing good state officials like Senator Safarini and Ryan Diaz. Because let me tell you, you have the best of the best serving in public office. It makes my job as a legislative consultant so much easier when you're working with dedicated individuals, dedicated to their community, dedicated to the food and eating on the development, uh, the economy here in, here in Zapata, it makes things so much easier for me. Uh, I want to say that Zapata County, the Commissioner's Court, have a real vision for the future of Zapata. They've adopted a master plan that was developed in conjunction with the leadership of the ZDDC, Zapata Economic Development Center. They have a vision for the future of this community. And that vision, little by little, is being put into place. It's becoming a reality. Now, it's not always easy to focus on the future. And especially when, well, most recently we've had uh, property devaluations because you all get gas companies, the oil and gas companies have moved away. And it's easy to neglect the future when your tax coffers are full of royalty payments. But the mark of true leadership is when you have public officials making the tough decisions that have to be made in order to prepare a community for the future and for the future generation. Because leadership involves not just dealing with today's problems, but looking ahead and dealing with the challenges of the next generation. I want to single out for praise two individuals. Senator Judith Zaffarini and State Representative Ryan Diaz. Because many of the accomplishments that have been achieved could not have been achieved without having our champions. And they have been true champions in Austin, fighting for everything that Zapata County needs. Let me give you one example. One of the accomplishments is this facility. It's, it's a tangible accomplishment. The Zapata Technical and Advanced Education Center. And it's now become part of our educational and economic development infrastructure. Less tangible is the achievement in the area of providing Zapata County with the tools that it needs in order to regulate growth in the future. Ordinance-making powers and zoning powers. These are powers the county of Zapata has together, which no other county in this state has. And I think that single achievement is something that we should all acknowledge now is a result of Commissioner Arco Garza, one of the most humble, modest individuals. Because the reason I am here in Zapata County is because of Commissioner Garza. I think we were in Southern Ignacio one day, Commissioner, and he came up to me and he says, Hector, what are you doing? I was there by grandmother's house. I was a stone historic building built in 1899. I said, well, I'm trying to fix this place up. He said, Hector, can I speak to you for a moment? I said, yes, of course. He 
said, uh, Gene, you can help the county of Sopocalypse. And I always wondered how the county of Sopocalypse, in any way that I possibly could. Although I wasn't born here, I got here about as fast as I possibly could. I was baptized in the church in San Ignacio. <coughs> he said, can you help us get ordinance made in powers for the county? Now, I knew that the Texas Association of Counties had been working on trying to get ordinance making powers for I think the 254 counties that exist in this, in this state. I said, look, I don't want to represent the problem. I don't want to represent 254 counties. I knew that time for session after session, the Texas Association of Counties had gone before the state legislature to ask for ordinance making powers. And every single time they had failed. In fact, during my whole tenure in the legislature, the House and the Senate had been to my office and said, Will you help us get ordinance making powers? Whatever the reason. And I said, Commissioner, let me do it this way. Now, I stepped out, kind of like into outer space. And I said, I'm going to do it one way or the other. And guess what? You've got to be very careful about the platitudes that we use to stand together for the legislative process. There's, there's one, one nice thing that says, unity is strength. And generally, I think that that's absolutely correct. But in the legislative process, you don't always know who your allies should be. And in that situation, our allies weren't. The, the 253 other counties. Zapata County went at it alone with the help of the CPDC. We lobbied that bill. We presented it, first of all, to our newly elected state officials, Senator Sapphini, and then at the end. And slowly we made our argument to the state legislature. And we were able to pass it. Subsequently to that, we were able to get some of the powers for the county of Zapata. And together with the tangible and intangible achievements, I think we're going to be making the lives of Zapata County residents better. Now, I would be remiss in saying that throughout each legislative session, the Zapata Economic Development Center has been there. Um, out of the public view, um, and they've been there to coordinate uh, the aspirations of the local community, to improve their community, uh, together with the ambitions of our county officials and state officials, all with the ultimate purpose of improving the economy here in Zapata County for its residents and for the future generation. And Commissioner, I want to say thank you to you for, for asking me to help because if it had not been for Commissioner Garza, and it was his idea that Zapata County approached the legislature for these uh, these powers that they're going to make things better here in Zapata. Now, last month we had the opportunity to meet, meet Tracy King, our newly elected state representative. And I want to tell you that it's going to be hard for Representative King to fill Ryan Green's shoes. But I think he's up to it. First of all, Representative King is a veteran legislator. And like Representative Guillen, he's not afraid to cross over to the aisle to the Republican Party. He's a Democrat. Because when you get to the legislature, as I said, Sometimes you don't know who your, ally, uh, your allies should be. And both Representative King, Senator Sapphine, and Ryan again, all of them have been able to work with the Republican Party in order to get their legislative objectives uh, uh, accomplished. I agree with Representative King that the single most important issue facing the Texas legislature 
is public school funding. Right now, in Austin, the constitutionality of our school system, public school system of finance, is being litigated. And almost every city school district in this state is involved in this lawsuit. And it's clear to me that our public school system is broken. But, and I'm talking about the system of finance. This may actually be a symptom of a much larger problem that we have here in Texas. And that is an outdated tax infrastructure that does not generate sufficient funds for the state to meet its constitutional duty to provide a good, efficient public school system. That's the basis of the lawsuit. Is the state contributing enough money? And the infrastructure, the tax infrastructure, seems to be geared more to helping urban areas do better by assisting them to attract large corporations to settle in or near urban areas, and less geared to supporting rural communities' aspirations to grow new communities. Now, why should you, the stakeholders in this community, be interested in the next legislative session? It's a 140-day session. I don't know how they do things in Iowa, but here in Texas, we meet every two years for 140 days. And that's it. You've got to get your business done in 140 days. Let me tell you that every educator in this state knows why we should be interested in the next 140 days coming up starting January 8th. Polls consistently demonstrate that Texans believe that education is the single most important issue facing the legislature and that it should be the legislature's priority above every single other issue. And Texans, you and I know, our parents knew instinctively that a good ed education is the best foundation for a person's future. And a well-educated community is the best foundation for the economic future of that community. But depending on the sources that you look to, to help balance the budget in the last session, Texas cut public education spending by between four to five point four billion dollars. Now that's a significant decrease, considering that it, Texas already ranks 11th from the bottom. That is, it's 39th in public school funding per pupil. There are 38 other states that spend more money. Now, this is not a partisan issue. Former First Lady Barbara Bush observed in a February opinion piece that the state of Texas ranks 49th in verbal SAT scores, 47th in literacy, and 46th in average math SAT scores. Let me repeat what the former First Lady said in a recent speech. We rank 36th in the nation in high school graduation rates. An estimated 3.8 million Texans do not have a high school diploma. And the United Way estimates that the price tag for dropouts to Texas taxpayers is $9.6 billion a year. Do you have a slide ready, please? And I want to thank Alicia here for, for working on these slides. Uh, uh, whatever you want to Now let's do this about the hands. Let's do that. Let's do those first. Okay. Now what's happened here in Spock for the last three years? And I don't know if you can see these numbers, but I want you to look at um, 
this number here, 50,753,457. And compare that to 20,113,759. This is total receipts. Um, we've dropped. That's probably due because of property valuations. But when you look at all right, so total receipts dropped from a high of forty-seven million for the two thousand nine two thousand ten school year to thirty-nine million in the two thousand eleven. 2012 school year. Now we have had, it's about the, the, the school district that has, I think, three out of its five schools recognized at the state level. How long can we expect them to do more with less money? if the state doesn't help out. And what is the financial impact on Sabata County's economy when you have $8 million less circulating, circulating through the local economy? I'm not an economist, but I'm going to tell you that I think that's going to hurt local businesses. Now, as the Sabata County Independent School District was experiencing massive loss attributable to failing economic, the failing economy and reduced property values, and state ed education, state education funding was being cut. Texas gave out more tax incentives than any other state, around 19 billion, around 19 billion dollars a year, according to uh, a New York Times study of the Texas Enterprise and Emerging, Emerging Technology Fund. That's a giveaway of $759 per capita. And that's two. 51 cents of every state dollar in order to attract business and industry. Dale Kramer is a conservative, is the president of the Te Texas Taxpayers and Research Association, has asked a very important question. Where does economic development end and corporate welfare begin? That's money, 19 billion, more or less, that never makes it to our state coffers. Now, who are the winners? And who are the losers in this process? And I don't know if you can read this. It said Austin, the Woodlands, Richardson, Houston College Station, Austin, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Arlington, Richardson, San Antonio, Fort Worth, Mansfield, Sakina, Victoria, who are ready for that. Because The state's enterprise and emerging technology fund of tax abatement centers. Let me go back. The winners appear to be large corporations induced to come to the state by state tax incentives. They locate in or near urban areas that have a thriving high tech and educational infrastructure. We're just beginning here in Sabata. The state's enterprise and emerging technology fund and tax incentives may be a good tool to attract those corporations that might not have come to Texas in the first place without the incentives. And let's be realistic about this. The state of Texas is competing with other states to attract these businesses and in, in, in industry. We want their, their jobs in the large payrolls, but what is the cost to our state's general revenue fund and to rural schools such as Zapata, 
schools that are in need of replenishing their education dollars to provide quality education to their students that will allow them and their communities to compete effectively in the economy. And the question I ask, and I think the question a lot of legislators are going to be asking, is in the name of creating jobs, are we giving up too much of the potential revenues and shortchanging students system-wide? Now, I'm not criticizing those in the cities who are using the state law and government to promote their own economies. I have to admit that those who are the least able to articulate their needs in this process may be the ones who are the most adversely affected, and that is the students in our public schools. Rather than the criticizing, I'd like to challenge you to learn more about the Texas tax infrastructure, and especially how public schools are funded. It's truly one of the most important debates that will take place in Austin at the next legislative session. And it's been my experience that government helps those who come up with the ideas to help themselves and to promote their vision for their own communities. I will repeat to you that the Zapata Commissioner's Court has gotten involved and is staying involved. Ours is a young and growing community. We have think, close to a thousand students presently going to school in this community. We owe it to them to stay involved, to stay involved in our community, in our state government, and especially in education, so that we can say to them that for Sapaka County, the best is yet to come. I want to thank David, Peggy, Alicia, Victor, all of you for being here this morning. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve Sapata County. I'm here to serve business in Sapata County. I want to help bring business and industry to Sapata County. Let's work together. Let's stay involved. And let's make it happen. Thank you very much. First off, my name is David Brown. I'm the Dean of the College here in Sapata, the Sapata County Technical Advanced Education Center. We're so glad you all are here today. So starting in January, we are ramping up our college credit course offerings to offer seven core curriculum courses that can transfer to any university in the United States. We'll be offering English 1301, English 1302, psychology, sociology, Texas government, college algebra and U.S. history from 1442 to 1863. So any of, any of you have students or any of you interested in taking some college credit courses, uh, those will be available here at the ZCAC here in Sapata uh, in January, starting out on January 17th, is the first day of class. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Ken Williams Brown. I'm sure I can't tell the college. <laughs> Services Commission, Office of Border Affairs, and uh, what I'm here uh, to talk about is the challenges that we've been facing in um, providing the uh, services to the most underserved areas in the state of Texas, and those are the colonials. Uh, in Webb County alone, we have 62 colonials. And in Zapata County, all of your subdivisions you have are annotated on the Secretary of State website as colonials. You have 41 colonials here in Zapata, Texas. And so, <clears throat> this is what a colonial is, basically. And based on the, the uh, Explanation there. Uh, you all meet this criteria. 
what we've been able to do is try to meet the basic living necessities of, of these areas. And what we, not just by what our program, but by merging with county officials, merging with city officials, we've been able to slowly shrink. Uh, uh, we do have outreach workers, which are called DORES, and that's one thing that we're going to be doing with the Temple Colonials program here in Zapata. Through your, your educational component here, we'll be able to bring uh, some uh, certification classes for all the uh, We're also doing uh, ESL classes. We're going to start ESL classes here with First Baptist Church, also through the Zapata Economic Development. And we're working with Pastor of the One at his church starting hopefully in January. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Edgardo Flores. I'm now the director of the Zapata County Museum of History. The museum is conducted by over a thousand people, and not just local, but we have uh, visitors from all over the United States, Canada, Mexico. Uh, we offer uh, all kinds of tours. Uh, the idea of the museum came about about five years ago as part of a strategic planning effort uh, conducted by the uh, Economic Development Center. Uh, it took quite a bit of uh, planning. We, we called ourselves a dream team because we rose above the colonial. We rose above the uh, the infrastructure problems that we have, like transportation, communication, and uh, the problems that we have in service. The community cannot attract industry uh, unless it has all of those basic needs like transportation, communication, etc., uh, as well as the water and sewage facilities. And all. Those are the basic needs. But they look at the quality of life of the community. Uh, in, in, in order to bring uh, a distribution center, for example, I believe Walmart at one point was looking at Zapata as a distribution center where we would build a large warehouse and we would be able to uh, dispense merchandise to the valley and merchandise to the greater. Uh, I hope that we're still in the running for that. And because of our uh, uh, potential visitors uh, being Fluent in English and Spanish, uh, all presentations, including the text, is in both languages. Uh, we offer, as I mentioned earlier, multilingual uh, presentations to our listeners. We're now uh, a tax exempt institution, so any donations that are made uh, uh, will apply to certain foundations as well. Our tax exempt is certainly. Uh, one other feature that I failed to mention is that the museum is surrounded by botanical gardens. It's the only butterfly garden in South of San Antonio. And we're hosting right now about seven different species of butterflies, including the monarch butterfly that everybody looks forward to in spring as they come uh, back north from the wintering grounds in Mexico. And, uh, and, then, and then they make their way down to the Trocan in September. They stop at our butterfly garden and, uh, and they go through the whole life cycle. So uh, our students have really enjoyed being able to see all the years. Another feature that we have uh, uh, surrounding the, the building is uh, an arboretum, native tree arboretum. We have 14 different species of native trees. I just want to tell you briefly about a new tool. Right now, I mean, the, the tough economic times are, are still with us and, and, and may continue for quite some time. So there are many businesses, local businesses, that are struggling. And we want to, to you know, part of our role is to support them. And new, new businesses and those folks that may be unemployed wanting to look for uh, or have interest in starting their new businesses. There are tremendous opportunities. But we have a $95 million dollar Sale, retail sales leakage out of Zapata. So uh, residents spending $95 million outside of Zapata. So one of the key things we're doing is to let you know what businesses are here. We, have, we just finished the most comprehensive 
list of businesses, and there's almost 800 businesses right here in this park. So we'll be uh, having, we have a new tool that will allow you to go and look and search for something and hopefully support our local businesses and entrepreneurs. But when you go to our website, um, this is a tool uh, that is designed to meet the needs of businesses and uh, anyone looking for information. So it's, uh, if you go to the next slide, you click on that, Tools for Business uh, Success. And what it is, it's got over 600 links to resources for businesses, uh, even government, uh, education, so it's continuously updated. So all the information is current. And so it's a really good, low-cost method for a business to find information right 24 7. It's customized to all the different businesses and industries that we have here. So I just encourage you to, to take a look at it. Um, there's tremendous resources there, everything from marketing, whether you're a for-profit, non-profit, uh, or an entrepreneur thinking of starting a new business. On every page, it'll, if you're looking for a business locally, it will tell you, uh, say you need a, a business and you're looking for supplies or tools. I mean, uh, you need a supplier. Hopefully you'll find a local supplier that can help you. And international trade, if that's the case. But these are just some other things. Fraud prevention and different types of uh, tax planning and, and tools like that. So just encourage you to go there and uh, you can also look at all the other uh, uh, resources that are on the EDC website. with phase one is going to issue an iPad, similar iPad, to every student and staff member as a matter of high school. Our rollout has already begun. We've already issued our iPads to our staff. In January or February, we have an estimated rollout to every student at the high school, so we're getting about a thousand iPads. Phase two, hopefully, if everything goes smoothly and the school board approves, we're going to roll out iPads next year to grades five through eight, so we will have five through 12th grade next year. And in phase three, again, with board approval, the following year after that, we will have iPads down to the first grade level. So this would mean every child that's a Pakatani ISD will have access to technology. And these iPads will not be something they're going to leave at school. No, these iPads will be issued to the students. They will take them home. They will keep them over the summer. They will only turn these in upon graduation. So they graduate, it goes back to the school district. But these are for the students to use. And again, the program is called I Succeed Learning, Learning Anytime, Anywhere. Right now, we do have an informational uh, web page that we are going to actually publish live today. And you can find that on our homepage, www.ccisd.org slash I Succeed. You can take questions from the community, from parents, from students, from staff, and answer them in a timely manner. You can send us your phone number, your email, or if you wish not to get direct contact, we will publish an answer on our Instagram.